again going front to back, frontal lobe, oh, yeah. and then the temporal oh, lobe. Looks like the Terminator. Yep, right. And then there's your hippocampi again, temporal lobe, middle wow. temporal lobe. There they are. And then so cool. thalamus there, cerebellum, and then the posterior part of the brain. Okay, so um, these are different views of the heart. So this is your four-chamber view, so meaning we're covering right and left ventricle, um, right atrium, left atrium. This is the two-chamber view, so this is mostly focused on your uh, left ventricle and the left atrium here. This is my favorite view. This is the three-chamber view. Um, so uh, among Whoa. other things, you're seeing the left atrium, the left ventricle, and then the ascending aorta here. So you can actually oh, see, so see the yeah. yeah. So you can see the mitral valve, right? So this is the valve in between. Oh. Between the no left way. atrium and the left ventricle. So you can see when the valve is closed, uh -huh. right, then all of the blood gets ejected into the aorta and not back into the atrium, which right. is exactly so there's no leakage there. So the mitral Gosh. valve looks like it's performing uh, perfectly it well. It's amazing that a squishy little thing yeah. gets the job done. Isn't it amazing? And so this MR, essentially what we're looking for is the squeeze, right? Mm -hmm. So we're looking for, you know, how much of the blood that's in the left ventricle gets ejected on each beat, right? Wow. Um, and so generally a normal ejection fraction is 50% and above, meaning that of all the blood in the heart, every time the heart, the left ventricle compresses, more than 50% yeah. mm -hmm. is ejected, right? So a typical ejection fraction would be around like 55%. Um, we will have our cardiologist review these and calculate your ejection fraction, uh, but just looking at this subjectively, it looks totally normal. So in other words, symmetric squeeze, right. the, the uh, myocardium here is of normal thickness, not overly thick or, or overly thin. The valves look like they're um, uh, you know, functioning uh, perfectly and without uh, regurgitation. Uh, so um, subjectively, qualitatively, looks like a completely normal exam, and we'll have our cardiologist uh, read it. That's fantastic. Yeah, gray matter in red, white matter in white, and then um, all the relevant subcortical structures. So this is the which, one, yeah, which ones? Which ones? So are? this is the thalamus here. Uh -huh. So these are all part of you know the um, limbic system, and you know mm -hmm. essentially where the um, cortical spinal tracts and some of the other major tracts of the brain converge. The basal ganglia here, mm -hmm. um, and. Um, and then as we go down a little bit further, this is the hippocampi here. The, the big, mm, big, sort of big all structures of, mm -hmm. in gold here. So, uh, and then the amygdala. These are both part of the uh, medial nice. temporal lobe, important for learning and memory. Uh, and then specifically the hippocampus, very important for short-term memory. Yep, no, you guys are both. Uh, yeah, I don't uh, want you to have any yeah. aneurysms. Yeah. Right, no, um, very, very uh, clear, clean uh, exam. So again, internal carotid artery is right where you take your carotid pulse right there. The anterior uh, cerebral artery, and then in the back of the brain, the posterior cerebral artery. So the, this is the main um, artery that typically infarcts in a, in a mm -hmm. large stroke. You know, if you've heard of someone, mm -hmm. maybe a family member who had a large stroke, it's typically the middle cerebral artery. Uh, if you can see, oh my gosh. yeah, you can see, um, you know, you, you have what we'd call um, uh, dextroscoliosis of the uh, thoracic spine, meaning that the spine is a bit mm -hmm. curved to the right. And those so, are the kidneys, I'm saying? Yep, and yeah. these are the kidneys wow. here. Um, so kidneys, the liver. I love the way the meat looks like meat, the way you'd see it in the, where the liver does. Well, some, some of the tissues to me look like a slab of meat. They are, they're, uh, they're, it's organ meat. Yeah. It certainly is. <laughs> it certainly is. How's his liver? So liver looks great, and um, and liver fat, we can look at it together. And then here is your gallbladder, a little more compressed um, compared to Genevieve's, um, which is fine. You just uh, probably had a big meal or something. Oh, I did eat a lot, yeah. yeah. And then the common bile duct here, totally normal. You can see the pancreatic duct here, and wow. then the um, pancreas over here, the um, adrenal glands. There's, there's your right adrenal gland right there. And then here's the kidneys, which look totally normal, no masses. Uh, can you actually see the spinal column in the? Yeah, so That's we. So amazing. Yep, so we we see the spinal cord. Um, this is. Cool. And teeth. The neck. So yeah, and then to the neck, and that's like the submandibular glands here again. There's a fluid around the spinal cord. Um, a little bit better view of the thyroid there. And then going into the lungs. Heart. The heart we examined in the cardiac MR, and then now we're. Um, in each of these, I have my the, breath full. Was that? For, for we uh, uh, when we go through the lungs, we we made sure you did breath hold. Okay. Um, so they could look full. Yep. Exactly. And here's the pancreas. Better view of the pancreas there, and the kidneys, the adrenal gland right there, spleen. So again, going through, making sure there's no masses, lesions, congenital or structural or abnormalities, and it all looks totally normal. Yeah. Both of you have normal uh, brain vasculature. Both of you have super normal. Um, um, brain volume. Yes. Um, yes. And 
yes. and um, cardiovascular wise, at least my initial assessment looks like uh, you know very normal. 